In passive solar building design, windows, walls, and floors are made to have certain effects and qualities throughout the year, specifically the winter and summer months. This is called passive solar design because, unlike active solar heating systems, it does not involve the use of mechanical and electrical devices. Everything responds to an input of energy, this is passive. Passive solar refers to a system that collects, stores, and redistributes solar energy without the use of complex mechanical controllers. It functions by relying on an integrated approach to design, where the basic building elements, such as windows, walls, and doors, have many different functions. For example, the walls hold up the roof and keep out the weather and also act as heat storage, heat radiating and heat sink elements. These various components of the building simultaneously satisfy architectural, structural, energy and comfort requirements. Every passive solar heating system has at least two elements, a collector consisting of south-facing glazing and an energy storage element that usually consists of thermal mass, such as dirt, rock or water. Depending on the relationship of these two elements, there are several possible types of passive solar systems. Direct gain. Sunspace greenhouse thermal siphon trim wall It is important to realize that a passive solar system does more than just heat the building. Most importantly, it provides security because the temperature inside a passive solar building will be much higher than a standard building in case of an extended power failure in the winter. Thus, passive solar is part of resilient design. Passive solar also provides daylighting and a healthy exposure to sunlight. Lastly, the mass needed to store heat can usually also be used for passive cooling in the summer. The key to designing a passive solar building is to best take advantage of the local climate performing an accurate site analysis. Elements to be considered include window placement and size, and glazing type, thermal insulation, thermal mass, and shading. Passive solar design techniques can be applied easily to new buildings, but existing buildings can be adapted or retrofitted. Direct gain. Advantages. Promotes the use of large picture windows. Least expensive, most efficient. Can effectively use clear stories. Daylighting and heating can be combined, which makes this system very appropriate for schools, small offices, etc. Disadvantages. Possibly too much light, which can cause glare and adding of colors. Concrete floor slabs must not be covered by carpets. Overheating can occur if precautions are not taken. Fairly large temperate swings must be tolerated, about 10 F6C. Trim wall. Advantages. Gives high level of thermal comfort. Good in conjunction with direct gain to limit lighting levels. Medium cost, good for large heating loads. Disadvantages. More expensive than direct gain. Less glazing will be available for views and daylighting. No wall hanging or other coverings permitted on trim wall. Sun spaces. Advantages. Very attractive amenity. Extra living space. Can function as a greenhouse. Disadvantages. Most expensive system. Least efficient. Cannot be occupied when too hot or cold. Comparison of the three main passive heating systems. We compare the three main passive solar heating systems by listing the main advantages and disadvantages of each approach. The chart above shows the logic that can be used to design a passive solar space heating system. One of the most interesting solar homes built is the Jacobs II house. Designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. See the floor plan of this house, below. Which Wright called the solar hemicycle. As usual. Wright was ahead of his time, because this building would in many ways make a fine passive home by present day standards. For example, most of the glazing faces the winter sun, but is well shaded from the summer sun by a 6 feet overhang, figure 7.3c. Plenty of thermal mass, in the form of stone walls and a concrete floor slab stores heat for the night and prevents overheating during the day. The building is insulated to reduce heat loss and an earth berm protects the northern side. The exposed stone walls are cavity walls filled with vermiculite insulation. Windows on opposite sides of the building allow cross-ventilation during the summer. The interior view of the Jacobs II house shows the two-story south-facing window wall, the concrete floor, and the stone walls for storing heat. Like most of Wright's work, the design of this house is very well integrated. For example, 
The curved walls not only create a sheltered patio, but also effectively resist the pressure of the earth berm, just as a curved dam resists the pressure of the water behind it. The abundant irregularly laid stone walls supply the thermal mass while relating the interior to the natural environment of the building site. Successfully integrating the psychological and functional demands produce the best architecture. This is what the truly great architects have in common. Possibly the greatest advantage of passive solar is that it results in a more pleasant indoor environment, while active collectors only supply heat. The Human Services Field Office in Taos, New Mexico, is a pleasant place to work because of the abundance of sunlight that enters, especially in the winter. A sawtooth arrangement on the east and west walls enables the windows on those facades to also face south. There are also continuous clear story windows across the whole roof so that even interior rooms have access to the sun. Black painted water drums just inside the clear story windows store heat for nighttime use, while insulated shutters reduce the heat loss. Heat flow. Heat flows naturally from a higher temperature to a lower temperature, but not necessarily from more heat to less heat. To better understand this, we can consider a water analogy. In this analogy, the height between different levels of water represents the temperature difference between two heat sources and the volume of water represents the amount of heat. When both reservoirs are at the same level, as shown, there is no flow. The fact that there is more water on one side than the other is of no consequence. If, however, the levels of the reservoirs are not the same, then flow occurs. Notice that this occurs even when the amount of water is less on the higher side. Just as water will flow only down, so heat will flow only from a higher temperature to a lower temperature. Radiant energy. Understanding the heating, cooling, and lighting of buildings requires a fair amount of knowledge of the behavior of radiant energy. For example, what is the best color for a solar collector, and what is the best color for a roof to reject solar heat in the summer? The illustration below shows how surfaces of different colors and finishes interact with radiant energy. To understand why a black metal plate will get much warmer in the sun than a white metal plate, we must remember that materials vary in the way they emit and absorb radiant energy. The balance between absorbance and emittance determines how hot the plate will get, the equilibrium temperature. Black has a much higher equilibrium temperature than white because it has a much higher absorbance factor. However, black is not the ideal collector of radiant energy because of its high emissivity. Its equilibrium temperature is suppressed because it irradiates much of the energy it has absorbed. The equilibrium temperature is a consequence of both the absorbance and the emittance characteristics of a materials. If these colors were the finishes of automobiles, it would be easy to predict which would be hotter and which cooler. To increase efficiency in solar collectors, a type of selective surface was developed. These finishes have the same high absorbance as black, but are stingier in emitting radiation. Thus, their equilibrium temperature is very high. White is the best color to minimize heat gain in the summer because it is not only a poor absorber, but also a good emitter of any energy that is absorbed. Thus, white neither likes to collect nor keep heat, and a very low equilibrium temperature results. This low surface temperature minimizes the heat gain to the material below the surface. Polished metal surfaces, such as shiny aluminum, can be used as radiant barriers because they neither absorb nor emit radiation readily. For this reason, aluminium foil is sometimes used in buildings as a radiant barrier. However, the equilibrium temperature of a polished metal surface is higher than that of a white surface because the metal does not emit whatever it has absorbed. Although both white and polished metals absorb about the same small percentage of sunlight, White is a much better emitter of heat radiation and so will be cooler in the sun than a polished metal surface. Active Solar Active solar systems use collector panels to harvest the heat of the sun for heating water or air, and they use fans or pumps to move that heat indoors. Most active systems heat domestic water for cleaning and washing. Active systems can also be used to heat a building, especially if the limited solar access prevents the use of passive solar, but is available high on the roof. Active solar systems can also be used to run absorption refrigeration systems to cool buildings. Active solar heating systems use solar energy to heat a fluid, either liquid or air, and then transfer the solar heat directly to the interior space or to a storage system for later use. If the solar system cannot provide adequate space heating, an auxiliary or backup system provides the additional heat. 
Liquid systems are more often used when storage is included, and are well suited for radiant heating systems, boilers with hot water radiators, and even absorption heat pumps in coolers. Both liquid and air systems can supplement forced air systems.